First off, and I know that you, you've been uh, following how things are playing out with respect to the concerns that the NDC has raised about the errors identified in the provisional register that was exhibited. Other political parties have also aligned with those concerns. The Electoral Commission says, well, they've also identified those errors, but they have corrected them. So really, there's no need for an audit. Where do we go from here? Well, um, so uh, the final word reports to be that uh, the corrections have been made, and that's the end of it. The uh, matter ends there, as I understand what your briefing. Yes, essentially, they say that, well, because they have done those corrections. There is really no need for an, an audit, even though the NDC says that they have not seen the corrections that the Electoral Commission is saying they have done to the errors, as a matter of fact. That's the, that that uh, looks very absurd to me. And uh, <clears throat> I don't intend to be abusive, but uh, to make the point very forcefully, I think it's dictatorial to take that posture uh, because the constitution gives them the power but that power is uh, circumscribed by other provisions of the constitution let's look at their powers briefly uh, just the relevant parts <clears throat> so 45 uh, clause, clauses A uh, and D are as follows. The Electoral Commission shall have the following functions. A, to compile the register of voters and revise it as such periods as may be determined by law. D, to educate the people on the electorate, electoral process and its purpose. Let's even pause here a bit. Is that proper education? Uh, just to tell people who have pointed out grievances, which you have acknowledged exist. And then uh, after, after that, you say that's the end. We've affected the corruption. You have not seen them, and that's the end of it. Is that proper education of the people on the electoral process and its purpose? I mean, to uh, have blind trust in the mere ipse dixit of the electoral commission. I say, because that said so, that's the end. That's a dictatorial posture to take. And for me, others can have their views, but looking at this constitution in the round, that kind of situation is entirely outside the boundaries of the constitutional order put in place. Um, the other provision impinging on the powers of the commission or anybody given power under the Constitution is Article 1, Clause 1. Let us always revisit that provision. It is the most important provision in the entire Constitution. It says, Article 1, Clause 1, the sovereignty of Ghana resides in the people of Ghana, in whose name and for whose welfare the powers of government are to be exercised in the manner and within the limits laid down in this constitution. So they are, they, all exercise of constitutional power is to be geared towards the interests and welfare of the people as the sovereign of the country. And hmm. I'm at pains to see how a sovereign power whose interests 
and welfare have to be served by all donors of constitutional power can be just dismissed outright. Oh, we've heard your, gone through your complaint, we've affected uh, the corrections. And from social media, they are not even saying they've corrected all, say most of them. And that should be the end of it. To me, that is running, uh, to use an old expression, a chase and four. Uh, as a chariot drawn by horses, by horses in the old days. Mm. Uh, through the, the provisions of the Constitution. Nobody, mm. and I want to emphasize, nobody has absolute power that detracts from the welfare and interests of the people under this Constitution. That's a central requirement. And I'm sorry, in Africa, and particularly in this country over the years, people just look at power in absolute terms. I'm sorry. You look at the power conferred, you look at all the other coexisting provisions. They are relevant to the essence of your power. Now, let's mm. look at Article 3, clauses 3 and 4. Well, this part of your time factor, all they are saying is that every person um, Now, all citizens of Ghana shall have the right and duty at all times. At all times. And that's at all times. Anywhere. Because time does not exist in the vacuum. It hmm. must be allied to a place. And so that's part of the at all times. And so every citizen, I want to emphasize that, every uh, three, four, all citizens of Ghana shall have the right and duty at all times to defend this constitution and in particular to resist any person or group of persons seeking to commit any of the acts referred to in clause three mm. of this attack. Now, let's forget about overthrowing the constitution. But overthrowing the constitution by any unlawful means, you say any unlawful means, not necessarily by violence or anything. Mm. Anything that is not in line with the constitution, any means. And, 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 uh, and, and that includes it going into, in an election, into an election with with a, a, an electoral role that has concerns? Oh, sure. It's not a, a, pro, a provision of the Constitution. Right. And uh, it's part of the point. Every citizen has the right at all times to defend the Constitution. That even is enough. Of the other aspects of our abrogation or so, they are all part of the Constitution. So you know, the time is constrained. Uh, let's look at um, Article uh, 41 of the Constitution, Duties of a Citizen. Um, the exercise and enjoyment of rights and freedoms is inseparable from the performance of duties and obligations, and accordingly it shall be the duty of every citizen be to uphold and defend this constitution and the law. 